Hi guys, the BCP Joe, the BCP Liam here, and today we are beneath the streets of Gravesend, taking a look at this huge network of air raid shelters. This is a place that a lot of the local people have frequented back in their youth, and there's been a lot of videos taken off this place, but no actual kind of cinematic documentary style video, I don't think. So that's what we've come here to do today. It's a huge place that would have protected the workers of the Henley Electrical Cable Factory from bomb strikes during the Second World War. For over a century, the site at Norfleet stood as a busy dockyard of factories and industry, but its original use was far more picturesque. Rocheville Gardens was a pleasure garden maze of shrubs and fountains set afoot a chalk pit in 1837 as a tourist resort for Londoners to travel down the Thames by steamboat. Today, a few hidden clues still survive, including this ornamental set of steps carved into the chalk for visitors to traverse a cliff between the town above and the gardens below. In the same year the gardens opened, William Thomas Henley founded his wire factory in London. He specialised in underwater telegraph cables for communication, making a huge cable across the Persian Gulf in 1863. The new Gravesend factory was completed in 1906 after the gardens closed five years earlier as both tourism and industry spread. But in 1939, war struck. Various canals, cutting the arteries which keep the heart of Germany alive. Jerry is a little bit late tonight. The searchlights are in position, the guns are ready, the People's Army of Volunteers is ready. As the Luftwaffe threatened England's existence, workers laboured round the clock. After the Blitz, Henley's worked upon the Operation Pluto pipeline, providing oil across the channel after D-Day. But earlier in the war, a sense of security was missing. The Norfleet factory expanded in the 30s with a new headquarters and warehouses, but Thameside Industries were prime targets for bombers. Today, almost all of the original factory buildings have been recently demolished, but reminders of this industry and its workers' struggle remains. Deep in the cliffs behind the factory site lies an enormous network of expansive air raid shelters. Tunnels large enough to protect as many as 2,000 workers were cut into the chalk, possibly from caves left from the gardens. When the air raid sirens sounded, people would have to suddenly stop their shift and rush into one of the six entrances to the complex. Upon emerging, sometimes many hours later, nobody would know if their workplace was still standing. The subterranean maze is signposted like an underground city, with a first aid post and male and female quarters. It can be speculated that whilst the factory remained operational in wartime, despite the danger, the workforce would have been largely female replacing conscripted male workers.
Whilst the tunnels are largely empty, some furnishings still remain, providing a glimpse of its wartime use. From iconic Elsan chemical toilets to rusted fuse boxes and even some wooden fittings, the conditions down here have preserved things better than one might expect for an 80 year old facility. The ventilation ducts remain one of the central distinctive features of the complex providing fresh air into a bunker which would have otherwise become stuffy and smoky. The main ventilation room is twice as tall as the tunnels and presumably would have taken a great deal of effort to carve into the chalk. It is hard to capture the scale of this enormous construction on camera, towering over you upon entry. Original features survive from an array of electrical components to leaking diesel fuel, steel filtration parts and generator equipment. It is easy to get lost in a twilight maze, where sun and seasons outside become irrelevant. Whilst one can ignore time passing, the environment is both frozen in time and a reminder of the ticking clock. Graffiti from the Second World War is still visible, penciled around the inside. And Kenneth Eric Henry, uh, OBE apparently, Commander in Chief of Forces in India. <laughs> if it is a real person and not someone who's having a laugh. From names and numbers to Popeye and even an aeroplane, it is clear these traces were left by the humans waiting down here for extended periods of time. However, modern signs of neglect contrast against the blank canvas. Facing an uncertain future and a struggle against recent vandalism, the tunnels still battle with fate today. With the Henley factory site being completely redeveloped, it is unclear what will happen to the shelter complex. Lacking any form of listing status, they fall at the mercy of developers. But with a complex so large and concealed, could they ever really be destroyed? With the buried bear pit from Rocheville Gardens being rediscovered only six years ago, the tunnels may remain hidden within the cliffs long after the horror of the Blitz escapes living memory. But for now, they remain in a state of purgatory, hidden beneath the streets of North Fleet.